Hello everyone, this is Damon Bell with DigitalMagnitude.net and I want to quickly give an overview of our image balancer filter and talk about all of the adjustments that it has. The first adjustment to discuss is the white balance. If you turn this positive, it makes the image more warm. If you turn it negative, it makes the image more cool. And I'll go all the way to positive 100 and then I'll go all the way to negative 100 just to show you that there is a very large range of adjustment here and you generally won't use all the way to positive or negative 100 but it just gives you a, more flexibility by having a, lar a large range of adjustment. So what this is doing is adjusting the individual red, green, and blue curves and it's going to share a layer with white balance or with brightness and if I turn the brightness up the brightness is controlling this overall RGB curve where the white balance is using the individual red, green, and blue curves so they can share one layer. And the effect of both of these adjustments is stronger on the midtones than it is on the highlights or shadows because it's using a nonlinear curve. And by doing that, I'll just demonstrate here, I can push the brightness, for example, all the way up to 50, and you're not blowing any highlights out because that has a strong effect in the midtones, but that effect tapers off. And so you're not pushing any values to 255. But for this image, I'll go with 20 on that. Then you've got saturation, which is just a standard saturation adjustment. And it's the middle layer here. And then finally, you've got the top layer, which is contrast. I'll just demonstrate here and add a little bit of contrast. And that has a pretty strong effect on this image. And you can see this adds an S-curve to the image. You've also got contrast biasing, and this is going to affect how these two handles are creating, creating the S-curve. So if I push this all the way to highlights, you are brightening the highlights but having no effect on the shadows. If I push this all the way to shadows, it's darkening the shadows but has no effect on the highlights. If I go in between, then one side will be stronger than the other. So in this case, we're brightening the highlights, but not as much as we are darkening the shadows. So for this image, I think I want to push this all the way to shadows. That way we're not, um, we're darkening the clothing, but we're not brightening the skin any more than it already is. So overall, I think um, that makes the image look pretty good. A couple, couple more things to discuss here. This merge layer is when applied, if I uncheck this, and it's going to leave these layers for me in Photoshop so I can manually adjust these if I want. Remember previous values. If that is checked, then it's going to use whatever settings um, you used last time you ran the filter. It will start with those settings when you run it again. If it is not checked, it will start with all zeros. And then you have a preview. You can view the filtered, or then you can just at any time view the original to see the changes that you are making. And then we've got presets, and you can save your own presets, and I'll just demonstrate here. I'll call this my preset. So then now in the presets drop down, I'll reset this. And then I can apply those settings at any time to another image by just clicking my preset, and it just sets all those values. So now I'll apply this. And then I'll show you that it, we do have the layers here in Photoshop that we could manually adjust if we wanted to. Could go manually adjust something. Anyways, that's all there is to it. It's pretty quick and simple to use this filter and it's very powerful at the same time. So thanks for watching. And if you're interested at all in Image Balancer, please be sure to visit our website. That is digitalmagnitude.net.